Mate, it was really special to to be a part of that event, and I think for us, and, and particularly for me, I think it's been a long time coming. For all Indigenous people around Australia, I think for me, you know, growing up in Madura, we've got a quite tight knit community there, well, with our Indigenous community. But for me, going through school, I was quite quite blindsided to to what what really did happen that day, and it wasn't until sort of late. Late high school when I was a late late teens that I really sort of under, understood what what really did happen on Jan 26, and it was probably from then when I started to really not not celebrate Australia Day with my mates like I like I used to, like going to the barbies and getting on the pierce and having fun and playing cricket and doing all that sort of crap. Where now it's a really good opportunity for me to reflect on what actually did happen to my ancestors. You know, it's been what 250 years now, and we've finally got an event like this, so. Yeah, it's it's something for us to be to be quite proud to, to be a part of and to, to have my kids um, be there as well and to hear hear the stories from from our, from our elders and the stories from from those massacres um, for them to hear that at, at such a young age is really important because I'm, you know I I didn't get that until I was about 17, 18, 19 years old. So um, yeah, it's it was a really special special thing to be a part of and you know I've done what the, the Anzac Day Dawn Service in the past and for us to now finally get some recognition with a Dawn Service for ourselves to be able to celebrate that it's it was really nice so um, and it's just like a ripple effect it's like you throw a rock in, rock in a pond and the ripples slowly make their way out to the edges and it's what what events like this start to start to happen um, and I'm now starting to get messages from, from friends of mine that I've grew up with who are non-Indigenous and that I've played footy with and just saying, hey Clarkie, I'm, I'm thinking of you today and you know, because you know it's a, a quite a hard event for, for your people but yeah, for them to, to finally shift their attitude a little bit, it's it's good because we know that it's finally starting to work which is cool so I was expecting maybe a couple hundred people to be there um, and yeah, I think, we, I think it ticked over just over a thousand people. Uh, were there, which is really, really yeah, it was actually really surprising and, and really, yeah, it made me feel really good. And I know, like, obviously, all the Kiag people who who worked really hard behind the scenes to get the event up and running. I know it would have been a really good feeling for them as well. And then to look around and see, obviously, a lot of my non-Indigenous friends that I've worked with in the past that I played footy with, you know, my non-Indigenous family with on my wife's side to see them there. Um, yeah, it was nice to see. Nice to see the amount of people that actually turned up and, and was a part of it, and more in particular the, the non-Indigenous community in Ballarat as well. So it was, yeah, it was really special. I guess you know, growing up as a as a black kid in Mildura, you know, I felt I was a little bit arrogant to what the day meant to us because I guess I was robbed of of, of learning that history through school, but um, because it just wasn't taught to to us, and you know, finally things are starting to change in the education system where it is slowly starting to be implemented into the curriculum, which is great, but um, they've got a long way to go. So, yeah, I felt I felt robbed and cheated out of out of my education with with that side of things. But now that um, you know, I've been quite lucky enough to work in the education system for a few years, and to see to see it finally start to change is really cool. And now that I've got two young kids in primary school, to see them learning and wanting to celebrate their culture within their school and share it with their classmates and their teachers is, is really special as well. And then, yeah, for us to get the recognition of the Dawn Service, um, yeah, it's fantastic. And I see Ballarat as one of the first regional communities in Victoria to be able to, to, be able to do that is really special for us to be a part of. So, um, you know, I think over the last four or five years, we've gone down to Melbourne for the Share the Spirit Festival. Um, so that's also another really really special event for us to be a part of and to see the numbers that that's grown into it's been it's been actually quite ridiculous how big it's gotten over the last few years um, and then I think Melbourne and a few other regional towns did the, did the dawn service so for us to be able to stay here at home in Ballarat do the dawn service grow some bracky jump in the car and then cruise down to Melbourne to see family and friends for the share the spirit it was really cool so um, yeah it's nice to see Ballarat be one of the first ones to take that first step in making the change, which was cool. Yeah, no, it was yeah, it was shared and promoted really, really well. Um, 
and I think the community really took it on board as well. Like I think, yeah, I think like, just like Emily just said, it, it could have quite easily have gone the other way. Um, but I think, yeah, because I think because the times are changing, the way things are heading at the moment, I think yeah, the community are really, really able to take it on board and and accept or start to accept what the day is actually all about. You know, Australia does have a black history. Um, and it is a dark one, so it's nice for us to be able to share those stories, like Annie Mary and Annie shared all those stories and the numbers from the massacres, like it actually took my breath away and, and it does bring up a lot of emotions and stuff like that, so... You know, because they are, that was my ancestors and my family that, that had to go through that. And I've had uncles and aunties that were affected by the stolen generations. And, you know, that then is affected onto me because it is an intergenerational trauma that, that does happen. So for us to be able to have events and stuff like this finally happen, it helps not just my ancestors and my elders heal, but it also helps me heal as well. And then hopefully that's going to be able to help my kids move forward and and sort of understand the true meaning of what did happen on Jan 26 because yeah, it is it isn't a nice thing to, to be a part of and to understand what had happened but yeah it's nice to finally see Australia I guess pull the finger out and do something about it which is nice so yeah it is, it is hard to, to hear and it does does bring up a range of emotions and it always is pretty hard to, to talk about but I think if you don't talk about it and don't show emotion about it then it, it, it just shows that we don't really care so um, yeah, it's like I said, it is difficult, but I think we're we're heading in the right path. So, and to be a part of the Ballarat community now for for ten years, it's and it is it is home for me now. And um, I don't think we're going to be going anywhere for quite a long time. So, yeah, to hear to hear those stories and to see what Annie Di Nicholson there, um, you know, I know she's been through quite a lot. You know, obviously with her family and being part of Solar Generation and obviously health stuff as well. So to be able to see her, her there, I guess when the sun came up and to see the emotion in her face, it was like a sense of calm and a sense of peace had sort of come over her because it was something that she'd probably been longing for for quite a long time. So to see her and the other elders present there to to see them be a part of it and finally get that, that healing, it's, it's nice.